All right, we are at the end of this video. The new PC workstation is completed. The build went good. Forgive me for looking rough, but it's been a long day and I wasn't really planning on filming, but whatever. Before closing the video, I want to answer the one question that everyone was asking. Why you didn't get the AMD uh, Ryzen, Ryzen processor? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixed Best TV, hope you're having a great day and stay safe out there. In the previous episode, we unboxed all the components of the new supercomputer for audio. In this one, we built the computer. So, let's get to it. Before we start, all the links to the components are going to be in the info box down below, along with my mixing courses. A brand new one, Mixing Modern Rock, was just released a few days ago. Free plugins and all that. Let's start with the motherboard. We have the Gigabyte Z390 Designer Thunderbolt. So I'm gonna use the box itself to lay the motherboard on. And here we go. Time to mount the CPU. Let's open this. And now it is a matter of finding what direction this goes, which should not be hard because we should have a triangle up there that matches this triangle right here. This corner goes that way. We just let it sit and we rock it a little bit to make sure that it's in place. Because if you messed up this part, it's gonna be gone. <laughs> so now we close this and our cover pops up. Now that the processor is in place, we're gonna mount the Noctua heatsink before, of course, putting the thermal paste. I have two brands, we'll pick one. So in order for us to access the installing screw we need to remove the cardboard and to remove the fan here in the middle these brackets here one left and one from right and we're going to slowly take this out put it here you can see we have an amd kit and an intel kit so these are the common parts and these is the thermal paste with the brackets for the additional fan and the Y cable for the low noise we have our tool to put the screws and I think these are for the AMD it looks like it yes and these should be the Intel kit this should go behind the motherboard and these are all the risers and stuff for now we're gonna turn the motherboard and actually this way it's better and there should be only one way that this goes and it should be this one and you can tell because it has a little screw here so that's the only way that can go all right we can mount these heat sink in two orientation, either this way or this way. This is the good orientation. We shouldn't be blocking this port, but I'm not using it anyway. So we are gonna put these first, one, two, three, and four. Now the brackets for the configuration, the orientation that we need, should be this way and screws on I'm gonna tie them by hand and then give him a little push with a screwdriver I don't want to tie them too much I break things with my hands so let's double check our orientation 
which should be this one. All right, and let's put the thermal paste on. For the thermal paste, I have the Noctua and the Arctic. This one came with the heat sink. I don't really know which one is better. I think it's just thermal paste. So I'm just gonna use the Noctua. Uh, let's try not to screw this up. I'm just gonna use the proven method of a little bit in the middle. And that's gonna be it. Here we go. Okay, so it took a while before they were actually gripping, but they finally eventually did. And this one reached the bottom, and this one reached the bottom. I'm just gonna tie them up with my fingers. Now we're gonna put the fans back. So we're gonna put the one in the center first, back in. All right, I think we are good with that. And then I'm gonna mount the ram first because I don't want this to interfere with it. So let's open the slots. And let's see where the notch is. Should be this way. And the first one is seated. The second one is now seated. And fourth. And the ram is mounted. Additional fan. And we have the brackets. Um, where are they? They were in the common parts. Let me actually see how these are mounted. Okay. So that's the direction. And these should be mounted one here. And one at the bottom here. This is where I break things. Watch it. There you go. Okay. I just want to double check if this is actually the orientation. The cable comes out from here and see, because otherwise it would sit right on the ram. I'm gonna mount it a little bit slightly higher. It doesn't really touches the ram, it's just the cable touches it. So I'm just gonna sit it a little higher, just a little bit. And I think we are good like this. Actually, I can go a little lower. Yeah, we should be good. This cable. It goes right here. So this is how it looks. It's slightly higher, even though I don't have a high profile ram. The cable is just was forcing a little bit, so I rather mounting it a little bit higher. It doesn't it doesn't hurt anybody. All right, now to onto the uh, X Y cables and the low noise options. So for the low noise cables, we have this split cable and these two low noise adapter. There's one specific way to connect all these together. This part, the, the split cable, the Y cable goes to the motherboard. And you don't hook these two directly to the Y cable, you go through these first. So this should be fairly easy. So we connect fan one, we connect fan two, and now we connect these to the split cable, which I may or may not just damage there with that move. And this is how it's supposed to be. I'm looking at the picture right now, so yeah. This is how it's supposed to be. And then this goes to the CPU fan. All right, this is connected. I'm gonna get a zip tie and zip tie this. By the way, I suck at cable management. It's not gonna be like one of those clean build with everything is super tidy, it's not. Okay, so CPU is mounted, heat sink, RAM all mounted. I think it's time to grab the case. And in the motherboard, you also find this, the Gigabyte G connector for all the little cables 
that are coming from the front panel instead of plugging them individually here in that little tiny slot uh, when the motherboard is in it's a pain in the ass so you pass them through this and then you just plug this one there's only one way it goes like this and all the front panel cables are going to be plugged so this is very useful let's grab the case let's mount the power supply the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to change the fans that are installed in it with the um with these with the silent fans cool master that i bought so i'm just going to do that right away and this is how it looks with the new fan i'm going to do the same for the other three all right the three front fans are installed the silent ones and now i noticed that i can put a bigger fan here and that's when I bring in the Noctua. So we're gonna put this one silent fan again on the back. Okay, the Noctua comes with, this is a low noise adapter again, and the four pin, four three pin, and then an extension cable. So I think I'm gonna put the low noise right away and probably the extension cable as well. Noctua mounted on the back. Now I'm gonna put the G connector here to the front panel pins and you get the positive and the negative and you slide this one in and all the other are gonna do are gonna be the same. I'm gonna start to install the power supply, smart zero fan on off with on the fan does not operate if the PSU is a low loads off silent fan operation. I'm gonna turn it on. I like this idea. This is how we are going to do it. We go back in. So I think before installing it, I might be better off start uh, putting cables in. They are labeled. So this is the CPU and this is the main power to the motherboard. So we can start with that. Okay, this is a really tight fit. Now let's connect the CPU. Let's make sure these are all the way in. There's no click in this power supply, so I just need to push and hope for the best. PCIe, there you go. There's one, two, three. Should have put the bottom ones first. And four. All right, cool. Let's put this bad boy down. There we go, then we'll pass the cables through the holes according to what peripheral you're gonna mount. And then we screw this one in. All right, so this is a power supply, it's in. Let's start pulling cables. This is the part where I suck cable management. I'm gonna pass the motherboard cable here in the way i'm just gonna use this one in the middle again motherboard the cpu you know what for now i'm just gonna pass them all through here just so i can move the case and turn it on the side because now it's time to install the motherboard in oh actually no actually it's better right now if I mount the STD, because this is the panel where it goes. Okay, so panel removed. Now the SSD will go there. So for now, I will have only the OS hard drive, well, SSD, and the others, I'm gonna pull them from the other machine, but they're all either samples. I keep them one hard drive for samples, one hard drive for Pro Tools projects, and one hard drive for backup and then the two external ones it will be completed once i actually turn that machine off the main computer that i'm using now take the hard drives out this way i'll be able to install the operating system here install the programs test the hardware test everything and then the other one is just going to be a plug and play 
Well, not really, but it's gonna be easy to make the computer see the new hard drives. One down. Let's screw this back to the case from here because it's easier actually. It's not just easier, it's the only way. All right, this hard drive is plugged in. Let's try to see if we can fit the motherboard on this case. There are already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine risers. So the motherboard doesn't touch the chassis. Motherboard is in. It's really hard to see, but it seems like it's aligned. Okay, let's start putting the screws in to secure it. Okay, installing these screws was not easy with the heat sink on. So I'm just gonna take the phone in my hand and show you one, one there. Okay, so these two were actually um, went in the wrong way and they were forcing a little bit. When you mount these, make sure they don't force when you screw them in, they shouldn't, okay? Screw them out, back out, and then find the right groove or you're gonna damage your motherboard. All right, motherboard is in the case. Everything is secure. And now it's all a matter of installing all the cables, all the fans to their respective socket. First to go is gonna be our main power to the motherboard. That was a slight click. I'm gonna try to pull it just to make sure that it's seated. Next is gonna be our G connector with the power and all that and the speaker to the computer. Let's see if it's that easy as they say. Yes, it seemed to be seated correctly. We will see when we try to power up. Next is the USB 3 on the front panel. So let's try to hook that one up. That was seated too. All right, we are almost ready to go. I had to do some work off camera, which was this fan to turn this sideways. So the cable was here instead of down there at the bottom because the uh, Cooler Master have short cables and they don't come with an extension. So this was right enough to be hooked without being tense the second fan is here next to it and then i had the third fan at the top which uh, this motherboard doesn't have another fan header so i used a two to four pin adapter that actually came with an octua and so i could hook up all three this one is connected to the system fan right there and then connection of the CPU power. You can't see it because it's dark. There you go. So right there, the CPU power is connected. The two fans of the Noctua header are connected. You will never be able to see it. It's down here. I connected before putting the motherboard in. The motherboard is, the motherboard is secured to the case. So I will tie this cable up later. Now I have just to mount to take this SATA cable. All right, SATA cable connected. By the way, here's my copy of Windows 10. I don't know if it's a CD or something. I don't have a CD reader. Well, I'll do that with a USB. All right, slight change for this build. This one just arrived. So is the 970 EVO Plus M2 drive. And I will use this one for the OS and we will leave the other uh, SDD for Pro Tools project. We have two M2 slots in this motherboard. This one is M2M and this one is M2P. The difference is M2M shares bandwidth with SATA 4 and 5, and M2P shares bandwidth instead with SATA 0 and 1. So because I connected this hard drive to SATA 0, and I will probably connect the other two, one, two, and three, four and five, I don't need them. I will install this one on the M2M slot. And first thing to do is to remove the cover here. Here we go. And slide this out. Okay, now we have the standoff and the little screw that locks 
the M2 in place before doing that because you see we have well this cable is in the way but we have different length we're gonna find out which one is the right one for this so i think the last one is the screw let me see yes so we're gonna mount this on the last hole you can see this cable is right in the way, but you can see it, it's here. Put the drive in. Now we insert this. There's a little bit of resistance, you can see. Now I'm going to try to screw this in. Don't want to tighten it too much. Seems in place. Now we mount the heat sink back. is in place so m2 installed we're getting there now we are waiting for the video card to get here so we can try to boot because without video card apparently it freaks out i tried it to boot and uh, everything works these fans works um, these fans works that one stops but i can't even hook up the monitor to see if i can access the bios yet because there's no video card. The additional monitor that I have only has VGA. And this one, the motherboard only comes with HDMI. So we're gonna wait the um, video card, which should be here tomorrow, and then we'll try to boot. All right, video card has arrived. Um, I put the description in the components. It wasn't here yet when we filmed that video. Is the Zotac GeForce GT730. It's nothing fancy. It's passive cooling, so it's got no fans. I don't need any fancy video card for audio. So I went for this one. Should be fairly silent being fanless. Let's take it out of the box. Let's take a look at it. Installing this. And here we go. It has a fairly decent heat sink. It's fanless. I don't remember the specs of this. I think it's four gigs. Yeah, it's four gigs DDR3 memory, low profile. I noticed something that as someone mentioned before, this PCI port here, you really can't use it with the with this hit sync. See, it blocks it. So the alternative is was to get a different hit sync, but to be honest, I don't care. I, this is the only PCI that I'm gonna use. I have two available. I don't see myself needing three ever. If I will, well, I'll just change the heatsink. This cable really is in the way, like a lot. But there's no other way other than maybe pass it behind. I will try to do that before installing this. Okay, I did it. I made it pass behind, so it's it's a little better. It's not right there in the way, in the middle. So this is our video card. It will go into this slot. So this is the cover that I need to get rid of. But yeah, for everybody, getting this motherboard with this heat sink at least in this configuration i can't imagine it's not worse if you switch it although this fan goes that way but this port will be blocked so let's open the slot and let's mount the video card okay seated at this point we, i can try to connect the monitor actually let me see if this video card does have yeah it has a vga i connect the monitor because i have an old monitor just to try and see if it boots i can connect cheap wired mouse that i got and i think this is the time to see if this things boots even all right power is connected let's turn this one on and we can see the motherboard is lighting up. Well, 
moment of truth. Power on. Okay, we have bias. This is not going, and this is not going. But CPU fans are going, and we are in the BIOS. So I need to understand why this is not going, and why this is not going. And probably, oh sh shit, that was blocked by a cable that I didn't tie up. All right, so we only have this fan not going. I don't understand why. I'll probably double check the cables. PCIe recognizes, recognizes the M2, so we recognize all the drives, Samsung Evo, Samsung 970 Evo. We recognize all the RAM. I think we are in a good spot. It didn't blow up. It's dead quiet, but this fucker is not working. Give me a minute, I'll, ch I'll turn it off and I'll check if the connection is not, you know, correct or something. Okay, I found the problem. The problem was that apparently with the low noise adapter, probably that fan, which is connected to the system fan header, has some sort of uh, control for you know low noise and RPM and all that. But the system fan header has four pin and this one has three pins. So I think it's more meant for a full RPM control, I don't know, to be honest, but you know what, now it spins, and it's quiet as, as it can be, so I really don't care about this. I'm happy that it's working, it's ridiculously quiet, I can actually shove my microphone in it. All right, it's <laughs> hella quiet. We're good. Now, in the meantime, my copy of Windows came with the CD, of course, which I don't have. I mean, who does? So while I was waiting for the video card, I made a bootable USB with Windows in it. Now, I have some sort of a problem. I had two USB connectors for the front, for the top ports here. And I only had space for one. So I don't know if all four works. I don't think so. Probably two per connector, I guess, because otherwise why there would be two connectors. So I need to figure out which one works. It's a shame that I cannot use the front all four if that's the case, but I don't care that much. Um, I'll try to install Windows right now. All right, I just inserted the USB in one of the USB three ports and it sees the Windows installing. Okay, here's my old computer, which is being dismissed. Uh, <laughs> it was a good run, buddy. Followed me around the world. Yeah, I actually saw that I had a pretty nice power supply on here. But um, like I said, I want to keep this one as a mule, so working. I will keep the OS in there. And right now I'm going to remove these three hard drives that I have here and there should be I think that one is the OS and I don't have any other SSD in here so these are just for samples and one is for a Pro Tools project I will keep two for Pro Tools projects in the new computer I will keep this one where I have the ongoing project and then the SSD the Evo that I got and this just out of curiosity is the other side, I had an i7-770K in here with the gigabyte um, ORS, how's it called? Motherboard, my 32 gigs of RAM, which I wasn't using. <laughs> Look at this heat sink compared to the one that we have now. In here, I also will keep the video card. And I do have, and these probably I will sell, two uh, RME, I don't remember the name, the number, the 3696 something something, both with expansion. 
this system is actually still very very good for anyone wanting to have like up to 96 channels on PCIe all right for this one I had to mount I don't know if you can see it but I had to mount an adapter PCIe to PC you know these cards are really really good and RME were solid let's take these guys out so here's one Godspeed, buddy. You worked really well. All right, the two hard drives are inserted into the slot, connected the SATA cable to a motherboard here. One, one behind this, and then this. And now I have this hard drive. So this case only has two slots for hard drive but this one is only as you can see 80 gigs and so it must be one of the oldest and probably I don't even know what's in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at it what's in here since that now I have the new SDD I can probably transfer data and um, just get rid of this okay in this drive here the 80 gigs that is now sitting there there's literally nothing. There's some old icons, but nothing. Nothing that I'm interested in. So I think I changed my mind. I'm gonna just dismiss this one. I'll just take the other SDD from the old computer and put it here. The hard drive is an SDD. I changed it last year. So why? I mean, it's Windows 7. Shit doesn't work in Windows 7 anymore. I'll get the other hard drive, put it here. All right, finally the build is done. The PC is ready, you can see it here on the desk. The four port, which right now only two um, work. I order a split cable that gives me, uh, hook up the two cables on the one header of the motherboard. And we are about to hook it up. Everything is hooked up, all the USB peripheral, everything the computer is near the desk power the motherboard and lights up so moment of truth let's power it up and see what happens and here we go let's turn this one up actually let me start the 16a2 these two are connected via cat cable Moto 16A is locked in. By the way, say hi to the new Empirical Lab Fatso new version, EL7X. Another unit is coming, three units, so it's a big thing and it's gonna go probably on the side. Anyway, Moto interfaces are up and running and online, connected via Thunderbolt. We open the control page and here we go we have our interface. Let's try to open Pro Tools. We have Motu Online. Everything seemed to work. We have a new computer and it works. All right, we are at the end of this video. The new PC workstation is completed. The build went good. Forgive me for looking rough, but it's been a long day and I wasn't really planning on filming, but whatever. And in the next video, I'll show you how to optimize Windows 10 for audio, specifically for Pro Tools. Before closing the video, I want to answer the one question that everyone was asking. Why you didn't get the AMD uh, Ryzen, Ryzen processor? Because Intel is tested and proven to work with Pro Tools. All the plugins, the architecture has been working for years and years and years. And most important, for audio, for music, mixing and mastering music and even recording. We don't need all that much power. We just don't. I was mixing a week ago, 170, 80 tracks mix with an i7-7700K and I was hitting 65%. So we really don't need that much power. And I wanted to build a cost-effective machine. This was below two grand, everything included. Now, if you mix scores for movies and you have 500 tracks and orchestras and all that, yeah, sure, you might want more power, but at that point, I don't even think it's a one machine job anymore. You know, you need a completely different system. Mm -hmm. To go back to the question, 
It's not that I don't trust AMD, I just don't trust AMD. Meaning this is my job, I want a reliable machine. I want something that has been proven to work for years. So um, why trade even a 1% risk for a little more power that I don't need anyway and for more money or the same money, I don't care. You know, I think I get my point across. So I'm not a gamer and I didn't build a PC to show off. You know, I need a, a workhorse machine that serves the purpose, which is for me mixing and mastering music. So if you have any question, leave it in the comment down below in the next video. Like I said, we will optimize Windows for audio, for Pro Tools in particular. I already did, but I will go through all the uh, processes, all the passages to optimize your operating system for, for Pro Tools, for audio in general. I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Follow Mixbus TV on Instagram and Facebook. There's a lot of exclusive content in there, including exclusive giveaways, pictures, and a lot of news that are coming up. Also, you get to see my dragon in there. I will post pictures and videos often. Subscribe if you haven't already, and please click the notification bell. It helps the channel a lot. And before you go, check the info box down below. Stay safe and see you next time.